All right. All right. Hey, um, so last week, okay, last week we said that a major part of our training, instead of being skills based this year, is going to be uh, really discussion based and kind of helping our mindset specifically on how God says we should view uh, some of the people and ministries that we will be with in Philly. And so that's what we have been looking at. So you're going to have, uh, if you're a person who's type A, likes another plan, you'll end up having four uh, whiteboard uh, activities throughout our discussion tonight. So your first one is right off the bat, and that's this. Okay, because we started our first discussion of four last time. And here's what I want you to talk about as a group and write on your whiteboard. What were some of the major ideas that we walked away with after our last discussion. And I will only give you one word to spark your memory, and that is the word community. Okay, so with that word, take some time, uh, and every group should at least have a couple of people that were here last week, and uh, talk about what were some of the major takeaways, some of the big ideas that we were supposed to walk away with after our discussion last week. Go. Um, This was not supposed to be an exhaustive assignment here. So, um, we'll start with this group, so that no one steals any of yours before we get to you. Okay? What was one of the main idea takeaways from last week when we talked about community? Come on now. Come on. Koinonia, okay. What about, what, what is koinonia? Adam? <laughs> Something about relationships. <laughs> okay. All right. So Greek word for fellowship, things like that. Good. Uh, key idea over here for community. Shalom. And what is shalom? Peace, right? Uh, wholeness. Peace within all the kinds of relationships. Key takeaway over here. Uh, we talked about the Trinity and how God himself is community. Beautiful. Okay. So how God himself exists in community. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God is, you could say, God is community. Okay, good. We talked about all that stuff and that a community should have diversity. A community should have diversity. <laughs> nice, good. All right, here's some things. Here's some things to jog your memory, and then we're going to move on to a new conversation, okay? I know you're not at tables, but make sure that you're still focused uh, when you're not on your assignment parts, okay? Here's a couple things we talked about the word marginalized. Okay, a marginalized people group, someone who's pushed to the outside, someone who's not treated well because they're outside the norms of culture. We talk about holistic ministry, where you minister not just to someone's spiritual needs, but their physical, emotional, uh, those sort of needs as well. And then the three big things we talked about where God exists in community, you and I are created for a community, and Christians are God's community on earth, right? So we're supposed to represent what community and relationship is uh, to those who don't know Jesus. Okay, so tonight um, we're going to continue to build on that with a discussion about a concept. Okay, uh, don't miss this because this is kind of where we enter into the whole thing. A concept that is pivotal to any discussion about marginalized people groups or justice or holistic ministry. And it's a concept that's really one of the trickier conversations of our culture today, okay? And that concept that we're going to just kind of talk around tonight is that of equality. Wow, that's a really bad one. I think it's perfect. Okay, so for those of you who can't see it, if you're more than two feet away from the board, it says equality. Don't answer this out loud. Answer this in your head. Don't answer it on your board, okay? This is just, this is a, a thinker question. Do you believe, do you really believe that we are all we meaning every single human being on this planet, not just we in this room. Do you believe that we are all equal in God's sight? Okay. Do you really believe that we are all equal, equal value, equal standing in God's sight? Okay. Now, tonight we want to see that God's word says that each human is created in the image of God. And we're going to go from there. So in the middle of your whiteboard, here's your second activity. Middle of your whiteboard in uh, somewhat small letters, because you need some space around it, uh, write the phrase, image of God. We talked about this sometime a little bit last week, specifically about community. We just touched on like a section of the image of God. 
So write down an image of God, and here as a group, discuss. I want you to write down everything you know related to the image of God. Like anything, anything that if I was just like, talk to me about the image of God, what are just some things, you know, what is it, what are its implications, why is it important, why are we talking about it, where does it come from, is there a passage in the Bible you can reference? Anything and everything that you know about the image of God, put it down. Preferably in like phrase or sentence type form, not just like individual words. Ready? <laughs> Go! Alright, time's up. So listen closely as we go around. And uh, now, let me just tell you this. If you were to study the image of God, okay, you could read books upon books. This is a major section of theological study. What is the image of God? What does it mean to be created in the image of God? Because God himself is an exhaustive subject. To be created in his image is an incredibly complex subject, okay? So that's why there's going to be all kinds of answers, and we're, we're looking for that, and then we're going to bring it kind of to a head here. So, uh, Dale, let's see, so let's kind of go around this way this time. Starting in this group, what are just some things when you thought image of God, what are some just things that you would do to connect to that topic? Um, well, the first thing that came to my mind was, like, created in the image of God. Okay. So, like, we are created in the image of God. I think it was Nathaniel said to have a soul. Okay. Uh, Carol said, like, so we were meant to be with other people. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. There was, like, a spiritual image, like how, like, children will act like their parents. Okay. Like similar. Mm -hmm. um, and Gavin brought up just a lot of, like, characteristics of God, like love, care, uh, power. Okay. Cool. I like how your group uh, began to highlight some of the things that are unique about people as opposed to other things that God created. Okay. Uh, over here, what are some things you thought image of God or created in the image of God? What did you put? We have like created in the image and then we had God is kind and holy. He's loving, merciful, and patient. And then we had we are flawless to him. Okay. And we are to be like God. So, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we are made for relationships. Good. We're made for relationships. Very good. Over here, what do you guys get? Uh, the likeness of God. Okay, good. Yeah. We have attributes like God. Good. Very good. And then, like, we're created in his most form. Like, okay. What I mean by that is, you look at every single person, you don't have, like, so many variations of people where, like, maybe one person has five arms and another person only has one, or one person has one eye. Okay. Everybody has, like, two eyes, two ears, two arms. So there's a unless, consistency unless to his creation in that sense. You're like, have me hate. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Over here, what do you guys get as far as the image of God? Just kind of give me some highlights. <laughs> or some lowlights. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> we stole them all. They don't have anything else written down. <laughs> all right. Okay. He's um, everlasting Father. Mm -hmm. Abundance of mercy. Very holy. Full of grace. Okay. Good. That one too. Yeah. Good. Right. So you, you highlight a lot of what God is, and those are character traits that we, unlike all of the rest of creation. Uh, can actually have those attributes, right? We can actually reflect those things. Here's, here's what I want you to remember about being created in God's image. Humans are uniquely created in the image of God, meaning we reflect God in a unique way. And again, if you were to sit down with, you know, like really smart theologians, if you had like five in a room and said, what is the image of God? They all might give you a different answer and they could all be correct, right? Some will talk about community created for relationship. And how that is unique, yes, you know, animals have groups and stuff like that, but the relational connection between humans is different, right? Uh, some would say, well, humans have intellect, emotions, and will, and that's, you know, a, a unique thing. Creativity, and the fact that we can connect with God, that whole idea of having a soul, having a spiritual relationship, right? We are unique. God created people unlike anything else that he created. Now, hear this. This is true regardless of a person's color, ethnicity, social status, education, religion, and so on, right? Every single human being 
is created equal, created equal in God's sight. Now, do we all perfectly reflect God? No, absolutely not, right? We all know Genesis 3, sin tainted everything and everyone, okay? So, there's kind of like three points I'm going to give you as we go here. Number one, we are all created equal in God's sight. And then, in God's sight, we are all equally broken, okay? We are all equally broken. Um, and some people, in their brokenness, well, all of us, really, in our brokenness, have tried to elevate ourselves over other people, by trying to justify or explain how they are less valuable than us, right? I mean, you just, you know, since the time you stepped on a playground at school, you did it, <laughs> okay? Um, but in society at large, uh, there are whole people groups who have looked at other people groups in our sinfulness, in our brokenness, and in order to feel more powerful or more important, we have said, that group is not as human as I am. That group is not as valuable as I am. That group is not equal to me, right? What would be the, the common term for kind of the main idea I'm talking about? Racism. Racism, right? Where one group of people says, hey, based on your race, your color, your ethnicity, whatever, you are not as human, you are not as equal, you are not as valuable as I am. But that's not how God sees people. God doesn't see people that way. He sees people as, hey, I created you equal, and you are all equally broken. Okay, so, uh, real quick, so we're looking at this idea of how God views people. Image of God sets the tone for equality, right? And so let's look at a few more verses. Here's your third whiteboard assignment. I'm going to give each group a verse. What you're going to do is you're going to read it out loud. You're going to discuss how it relates to equality, and then just be ready to share that with us, okay? So here we go. This group, Genesis 9-6. Um, this group, you're going to have Romans 9 3, 10, and 23. Romans 3, 10, and 23. This group, you're going to have James 2, 1 through 4, and 8 through 9. James 2, 1 through 4, and 8 through 9. Yep. And this group, you have John 3, 16. Yes. Yeah. Easy verse, so you better have some really good stuff to say. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time's up. Um, we're going to start over here again. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Uh, Genesis 9, 6 for this group over here. You guys ready? Okay, cool. So, again, you're supposed to prepare. Uh, what does your verse have to do with uh, equality, right? So, Genesis 9, 6 was the verse of if you shed someone's blood. By, by man, your blood shall be shed. Which for some of you would be like, that's a weird verse, okay? So what does it have to do with equality? Um, we are all made in the image of God, and we should all be, I guess, like, punished equally for our sin, because we all show the same blood, like, relatively. Okay, good, right? So here's God, early on, uh, this is very early in history, and he starts laying out, like, hey, here's, here's my laws, and some things are going to be done. And he says, if you kill somebody, then you're going to lose your life, right? Um, there's this whole thing in the Bible called the lex talionis, the eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, that whole thing, right? And so here, notice what God doesn't say. He doesn't say, hey, if you kill a man because he's the breadwinner, then you should be killed. But if you kill a woman, you know, just fine, just fine, right? You don't do that, right? He doesn't say, hey, if you kill someone, unless, unless they're bound to a wheelchair, Right? Because ah, they can't really be productive anyways, so don't worry about it. Or, hey, if you kill uh, someone with you know, brown skin, then you should be killed. But if they have a different color of skin, like, not as big of a deal. Right? God doesn't say that. He's just like, you kill a human being made in my image, and the just action, right, if it is intentional murder, all that sort of stuff, right, is then your blood is shed like their blood was shed. Right? Their blood, human blood, created in the image of God, yours, same thing, right? So you see equality even in the justice system that God set up early. Um, let's see, this group you had Romans 3, 10, and 23. Where did you see equality in those verses? Everyone is equal in sin. Okay, right? So, good. That's what those verses were about. 
It was just like, hey, God's like, hey, you're all sinners. It's not like, hey, you're going to pass, you're going to pass, you're going to pass. Hey, you're pretty good, right? It's like, no, wherever you're from, whatever color you are, however capable you are, you're all sinners, <laughs> right? You're all equal in sin. Good. Uh, this group back here had uh, James 2. Uh, the situation, hey, someone rich comes into church, do so you give them a nicer seat, you know, compared to the person who is poor? And so, uh, real quick, equality from that verse. Don't show favoritism. Yeah. Don't show favoritism. And actually, the one verse even said, like, if you do this, you show favoritism, which is a sin. Like, God's just like, if you say, hey, you're more important because you have money, right? If you take equality as far as human value and you give someone more value because they have more value of a bank account, right? God says, sin. Because he doesn't view people that way. He doesn't care about your bank account, right? That doesn't determine your value. And then we'll hear John 3.16, which you should be, be familiar with. Right? And uh, what does John 3.16 say about equality? Uh, it pointed out that like, the phrase, whoever believes, so it doesn't matter like, on any of their status or race or whatever. Um, like, the gospel is for everybody, whoever believes. Um, if Jesus died for everyone, then he loves the whole world equally. Um, and the world, obviously, is everyone. Um, and it's also implied that everyone needs Jesus. Okay? Good. And I ended with this one for this reason, okay? Remember I told you three, three ideas in our discussion. Number one, we're all created equal. Number two, we're all equally broken. And John 3.16 reminds us that we are all equally able to be forgiven in Jesus. Right? No matter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All people are offered forgiveness and a restored relationship through Jesus. So, earlier I asked you this question. I asked you, do you believe that people are created equal, that all people are equal in God's sight? And I hope, I hope that you answered yes, but I hope that now at least as you, we looked at a little bit of scripture, we looked at the image of God, and through the Bible, equal, 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 I hope that you have a strong <coughs> yes, okay? But, and this is probably as important as everything else we talked about tonight, and then we're going to start to wrap it up with this. I want you to recognize that that is easier said than lived. It is much easier said than lived. Okay? Because we're all affected by sin's influence on our lives and through the lives of others. Each one of us, no one in here excluded, myself, right? All of us can easily disregard someone else who doesn't look like, talk like, or act like you, right? Um, let's just make it very practical for this trip. Your concept of some of the people that you will meet in Philly has probably been more educated by TV, by Instagram, by hip hop and rap music, than by God's word, right? When we pull into Philly, we start driving through neighborhoods and you start looking at people, okay? Just because of how they look, what neighborhoods we're driving through, your initial thoughts and reactions may be such because of those things rather than first seeing people as God sees them. Created just like you. Broken just like you. Need forgiveness just like you, right? And can know Jesus just like you. Um, also, our area, meaning the Dubois area, is not incredibly diverse, okay? And is not devoid of discrimination, is not uh, void of racism, okay? Um, yes, there's not a whole lot of like institutionalized, you know, like you see it on billboards or anything like that. But I can even tell you in the number of years that I've been here, uh, in the trips that I took to South Africa, okay? And this doesn't make me somehow like better and like, you know, not, are still unaware sometimes of the blind spots of how they still see other people that aren't like them, that don't look like them, and they value them less, okay? And uh, so, my, my encouragement to you is this, when we talk about equality, be slow to give yourself a pass here. Be slow to give yourself a pass, okay? Uh, don't just think like, hey, you know, I've been on a mission trip, and I've dealt with some people, or, you know, I've got a friend or two that doesn't look like me, you know, I'm good. Right, sort of thing. Be slow to give yourself a pass and be quick to check yourself and correct yourself. Um, I hope, uh, I know, I know that when we go to Philly, there's just going to be moments 
right? Let's be honest. There were some of the videos we watched in the churches, and you're like, whoa, this is not what I'm used to, right? So you're like, this is awesome. And some are like, yeah, you know? So you kind of chuckled a little bit, right? You know, for different reasons. Some are cultural, which is fine. Some, maybe what we're talking about, right? That you look and there's kind of some stereotypes that start to settle in your mind, and instead of viewing people first as made just like me, broken just like me, saved just like me, right? You see them as something different. And so on this trip, be quick to check yourself and correct yourself. And let's, you know, as the trip goes on, just continually see people as God sees them, which is equal with you in every respect. Okay, so last assignment is a group. Uh, all I want you to do is talk it over and I want you to write your group's definition of equality. Write your group's definition of equality. Go for it. Came up with, and then uh, I have one short competition before I just give you a couple announcements and we pray. So I'll uh, sort of here just real quick, and this is not like a right or wrong sort of thing. So you may pull some different things out of tonight, but uh, definition of equality, go for it. We kept it pretty simple. Yep. Equality means we are all loved by God. Okay, nice, good. Over here. Everyone has the same rights and opportunities, and everyone is looked at the same way. Everyone's looked at the same way. I like that. Over here. Every man, woman, and child, despite their race or social standings, are treated and respected the same. Very nice. Good. And over here. Uh, people are given the same opportunities. People are in the same standing, and viewing everyone the same way. All right, good. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we may go a couple minutes over tonight, but not very much. Um, you have. Like 90 seconds as a group to look over this verse as best as you can. Then we're going to get rid of it. And we're going to go word by word through the verse. And when I point to your team, your team must come up with the next word or your team is out. <laughs> few announcements and we'll pray and then uh, you can hang out or head out here. So, um, okay, uh, next week uh, is our parent meeting week. That does not mean that your parent needs to be here all meeting, okay? Um, but they need to be here for the last half hour, okay? So if they could come for the last hour, there's no dinner next week. That's to make space for the parent meeting at the end. So eat before you come. Have a parent come for the last half hour. Please remind them, and I'll be putting this out on various things, uh, to bring the insurance card that you are on um, uh, and their ID because we hope to get some permission slips and stuff filled out and notarized uh, in that meeting. And if your parent can get here and get that done, it will save them having to schedule an appointment with a notary and pay a fee and all that stuff. So they want to be here. Also, we'll go over like packing lists, where we're staying, answer questions, uh, things like that for your parents. I'll get you here in just a second, okay? Um, also, don't forget to be working on memorizing your verse. Uh, which we just, uh, you know, most of us can need a little work on. Um, before you leave, before you leave, please make sure that you see Derek uh, to give him your date of birth uh, because we need that. In, I'm sure we got it somewhere, but we need it again for something. And, and leaders need to give Derek your t shirt size. Okay? Um, other than that, Nate. Other than that, there is still some food left. Feel free to grab some more on your way out. Um, any drinks that are left, you can take the entire drink with you if you would like. Um, the other stuff we're going to use for like BBS or different stuff like that. Okay? Um, questions? Um, you won't happen to be like emailing or putting out Facebook, would you? Uh, I'll be reminding parents of my I don't I know, there's a lot going on. Whoa, whoa. Hey, you know, like, we get to like last little sip uh, of these before you claim the doctor. Yeah, guys. <laughs> 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 All right, shh. Hey, we just, we're still going to pray and stuff. So <laughs> and I need to see. <laughs> and Derek needs to see. I need to see Sophia, Gorostikas, and Brandon. Sure. Yes. About the Rasmikas. The Rasmikas. And Brandon. And Brandon. Alright, cool. Uh, any 
other questions related to our trip, our meeting is the same time next week, but no dinner, parent meeting at the end. Okay? All right. No, we're good. Um, Hannah, would you mind closing us in prayer? And again, feel free to hang out, play golf, golf ball, whatever, eat some things, drink some cream soda. <laughs> We'll see some of you tomorrow uh, for VBS. Remember, there's no youth group this week because we're no. taking a deep breath. So, Hannah, go ahead. Thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we could be here and that we're all going to get to go on this trip together and have some cool life experiences with each other and with you. And we pray that we would really um, take in the stuff we learn in these meetings to prepare us for our trip and that we would have a good and godly experience to your honor and glory, Father, and in your name. Amen. Amen.